Last year in July of 2023, AMD launched the RX 7900 GRE, aka the Golden Rabbit Edition. And this was a China exclusive only. In fact, AMD went as far as to block and restrict the sales of this card via places like AliExpress, meaning that if you were in the US, Australia, the UK or Japan for instance, it was very difficult to obtain one of these graphics cards to the point where it was just not feasible to obtain one at a decent price. However, fast forward to 2024, China has substantial economic woes in the form of their experiencing deflation, and this basically translates to one thing, and that is poor sales in China for the RX 7900 GRE to the point where it's now available to the rest of the world at a price of around 550 USD. However, at this price, is it a good buy? Is it better than the closely priced RX 7800 XT, well today we're going to pull up side by side comparisons as well as looking at the 1080p and 1440p results and we've got two different models here today, the 7900 GRE ASRock Steel Legend as well as the Sapphire Pulse Edition. Now these two cards do pretty much perform identical when it comes to the benchmarks to the point where I've pretty much just included them as one card. But later on the video, we will point out a key difference between these two models. But also later on the video, we'll talk about more or less the politics involved in this card. But let's get on to those benchmark numbers first, right after today's video sponsor. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. Let's start off with the first title here, Cyberpunk 2077. And here we have roughly a 10% difference in the numbers, both at 1080p and 1440p, to the point where the GRE tops the benchmark charts, even versus that of the more $50 expensive RTX 4070 Super. And moving on now to Spider-Man Miles Morales, we can see that this difference is roughly, again, around 10% at both resolutions. Going over to Robocop Rogue City, again, that 10% rough figure follows through here. And then onto Baldur's Gate 3, we actually see quite a bigger gap here to the point where the 7900 GRE is undoubtedly the best value card out of all the cards in the graphs here at both 1080p and 1440p. Though another game here, Hogwarts Legacy, show that the differences don't come out as much as the other titles. And then the last title we're pulling up is Alan Wake 2, and this then follows that similar trend of a roughly 10% gain over the 7800 XT. Ray tracing also surprisingly, and I do say this surprisingly, follows that similar trend of roughly 10% more performance, even though the card does carry a substantial amount more of ray tracing cores. But we'll get onto the specs right after these ray tracing results, which do show that the NVIDIA cards, of course, do carry a big advantage when it comes to turning ray tracing on. Of course, depending on the title, where the path tracing is used or not, you'll experience a bigger gain. For instance, in Alan Wake 2, which supports path tracing, we do see the NVIDIA cards pull well ahead, but then when it comes to Hogwarts Legacy, the differences aren't as substantial. Though further looking into those specs, we can see here that you get a substantial amount more of shaders on the RX 7900 GRE over that of the 7800 XT. In fact, it's roughly about 30% more shaders. However, you'll notice that the VRAM is identical as well as the 256 bit bus. However, you do get a substantial amount more of RT cores, TMUs, and ROPs. These differences didn't come out to these roughly 30% gains in all these other figures. But there's also a substantial amount more level 2 cache, 4 megabytes versus 6 megabytes. However, the level 3 cache remains the same on these two GPUs. The one key difference here, and this is where I start to believe that the 7900 GRE itself has been severely hamstrung, is with these memory speeds. Out of the box, we can see that the memory speeds of the 7800 XT are quite considerably higher than that of the 7900 GRE, and looking into overclocking the memory on the 7900 GRE, we start to realize that this card has been hamstrung in this particular area. In fact, I would say if you were able to match the memory speeds of the 7800 XT to the 7900 GRE, the 7900 GRE would undoubtedly pull another 10% ahead of the already roughly 10% performance gain we were seeing in these titles. Also, the core clock speeds are lower than that of the 7800 XT2, and this means when we look at the power consumption results, they're actually very similar between the two different models. 
to the point where the 7900 GRE is actually a better card, not just in total performance, but also in power consumption and efficiency out of the box, and also therefore value being a extra $50 more. And so typically when you look at the value of a card like this, you generally, as you go closer to the high end, you get less performance for your dollar. That's generally how the high ends worked. So the fact that you get roughly 10% more for 10% more money and a better power efficiency profile is actually a win for the RX 7900 GRE over the 7800 XT. And in fact, I think the 7800 XT has now been usurped by this newer model to the point where I would personally, if I was looking for an AMD GPU around this price point, I would definitely stretch that extra $50 and prefer to get this model over the 7800 XT. However, the two models that we had here, the Pulse from Sapphire and also the Steel Legend from ASRock, out of the box, they performed very similar even though the Sapphire Pulse had slightly higher clock speeds on the core, it actually didn't make a difference whatsoever. This card was simply, as we said before, hamstrung by its memory speeds. And the fact that you could not overclock these uh, memory speeds past 2316, for instance, from 2250, means that AMD have placed an artificial restriction on these cards, meaning they don't want them to run any faster, which is kind of sad. I mean, AMD's already restricted the sales of this card from being sold to the West earlier in the year and also last year. And now they're also pretty much debilitating the card by not allowing you to clock the memory speeds any higher. So when people tell me to go out and buy an AMD card over an Nvidia card because AMD somehow care more about you than Nvidia does, I'd like to point them to these two things that we've seen within this video itself. And that is a card that they just couldn't sell well in China to the point where they're now selling it to the rest of the world and also they're deliberately making the card limited in its performance gains due to its memory speeds. And so the memory speeds does concern me because I know this card could run quite a lot faster, but that would make the 7800 XT look bad as well as make the 7900 XT look bad as well. This would simply be undoubtedly the best value card from the AMD stack wholeheartedly. But even in its current limited form, it still is the best value card now from the RX 7000 series, which is a good thing to see, it's a welcome thing, but I'd like to see more from companies like AMD and Nvidia. But then that leads us on to the next question, should you get this or should you get the RTX 4070 Super? The RTX 4070 has pretty much been outdone by the 4070 Super as we see from these graphs in itself, but also the 4070 Super is $50 more. So whether you want to go with the Nvidia route or the AMD route, that is your choice. I would say get what is best for you. If you don't mind power consumption so much and power is cheap where you live, then the AMD card is going to give better value for money, especially in the rasterization sense. That's where you're not turning on ray tracing or anything like that. But if you like what I call flare works, you like turning on ray tracing, you like things like DLSS 3 frame gen over FSR 3 as well as DLSS 2, then the Nvidia card, in my opinion, is going to be a better choice there. Also for me personally, if you are a content creator or you do things like streaming, I have found more stability in the area of an Nvidia card over an AMD card. However, in terms of just pure gaming, I've found that AMD's drivers have come a long way in the last year especially, and they're very stable nowadays for gaming if that's all you wish to do. Though as we hinted at earlier in the intro, there's two cards here in today's review. There's the 7900 GRE Sapphire Pulse, as well as the ASRock Steel Legend. And these two cards, pretty much out of the box, perform very similar in terms of their noise, as well as their temperatures, and even their hotspot temperatures. However, it wasn't until I started undervolting the card, and as we looked at in the power consumption results, I did show the numbers there, but also decided to include the undervolted numbers because I personally undervolt all my newer cards nowadays because I believe they're pushed too hard. Here's where we saw a slight difference in the temperature profile and how they manage undervolting. And here's where the Sapphire Pulse decided to just pretty much sit at the same temperature target, but the ASRock Steel Legend decided to do things differently and drop the temperatures down a little bit more, which is what I'm used to. I do like my cards running as cool as possible. So I would give the edge here to the ASRock Steel Legend in terms of its card design over that of the Sapphire Pulse if you're into more or less these things that I would call more nuanced preferences. Also, the ASRock does weigh in a little bit more despite its smaller dimensions, and that just comes from having a more dense heatsink on board. 
Now in terms of inputs and outputs, I'd actually give the edge here to the Sapphire Pulse. It's got two HDMI 2.1s as well as two display ports, and the ASRock has three display ports and one HDMI. So I do prefer to have more HDMI 2.1s on board because a lot of high refresh rate 4K TVs, for instance, they do have that HDMI 2.1 standard. And especially if you're looking on the used market for a bargain on one of these TVs, then it's always better to have more HDMI 2.1 then there is DisplayPort. The last thing that's obvious from the B-roll, if you've seen it already, is that the ASRock Steel Legend carries a white aesthetic and the Sapphire Pulse carries a black aesthetic. So depending on your build, there are good choices available. However, with all those numbers and data out of the way, let's move on now to a conclusion with the RX 7900 GRE. And I think if you're looking at the $550 MSRP of this card versus even the 7800 XT, which I thought the 7800 XT was than AMD's best value on the RX 7000 series. This lines up with even better value, and I do like the profile. It's much more conservative out of the box. And in terms of scaling, it actually scales roughly 10% for 10% more money. So it is quite a welcome addition if you're looking to get one of the best rasterization cards out on the new market. Now, in terms of the RTX 4070 Super, that's got four gigabytes less VRAM. However, it is a more efficient card and it does have better support with things like Flareworks. So ultimately this card I feel is a good card, but it's not a great card. And I think with everything that's going on in the world right now, countries entering recession, people pretty much being hamstrung on their real wages, they don't really wanna see a card that's hamstrung out on the market. They would love a great card in other words. And I just feel like, just like my critiques of NVIDIA's cards earlier this year, they're good, but they're not great. And I feel like the market right now needs something that is great in terms of value for money. I would have loved to have personally seen this card have higher memory speeds, and I would have loved to have seen maybe a 15 to 20% bump over the 7800 XT, and then this card would have just simply made a great card. So it's a good card, sure, but I feel like us as a tech community, we wanna see great, coming out of these companies. So please AMD, make this card great, release a VBIOS update for these cards, allow the memory sliders to go higher, and we can revisit and see if the $550 GRE is now making a great buy. But the last point I'll raise in today's video is looking at worldwide pricing, at least in Australia, take a look around at what this card costs, because in Australia you can get it for around a thousand Australian dollars, but then if you look at the 7800 XT in Australia, it's coming around 800 Aussie dollars. For a 200 Aussie dollar difference, I don't think that's justified for Australians. But if you're in America, they're pretty much coming around 500 USD for the 7800 XT and then 550 USD for the 7900 GRE. So in America, it makes a lot more sense, just like the 4070 Super did. But in Australia, it's not making a whole lot of sense, nor is it going to make you any dollars. You're best off saving your dollars and getting the 7800 XT if you are in Australia. Anyhow guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review of the 7900 GRE. Both these models here in today's video, they are virtually the same. There is a slight difference when it comes to undervolting, which would make me actually prefer getting the ASRock Steel Legend, just because I like the card to adjust to those lower temperatures when I'm lowering the power consumption. But that's just one man's opinion. I would honestly just look at which card out of these two is the cheapest if you're looking to buy either of them and get what is the cheapest available to you because that's where the real money is going to be saved versus getting something that's more expensive. But the last observation I've made in today's video is that we've seen a card that was released previously as a China exclusive now being released to the rest of the world. In coming years, one has to wonder what other exclusive products we are going to see released in the rest of the world. I somehow have a hunch that perhaps we may even see a Chinese exclusive hardened boot coming out in coming years, except you won't be able to wear them, they'll just be planted in your face. Anyhow guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.